Hey guys, welcome to my first audiobook riding lesson, a new tool in which you'll feel like you have a trainer with you in the arena every time you ride. You may be wondering why I've posted this on YouTube with no video, but my aim is to fill this channel with both these and training videos too. Well, as soon as the winter weather in the UK dries up enough to get the camera out. Anyway, I hope this is the first of many and you enjoy me chatting away in your ear or in your pocket whilst you school your horse. For a lot of people, regular riding lessons are out of reach, whether that's due to cost, lack of facilities or transport, or even to finding someone that you like and trust to work with. You may even be fortunate enough to have all of the above, but you just feel a little lost or lacking inspiration when you set foot in the arena. Either way, I hope these audio lessons help you to take these next steps to giving you inspiration, develop confidence and achieve your riding goals, whatever they may be. Firstly, I want to focus on confidence, and excuse me whilst I go on for a few minutes. I promise we'll get to the riding bit soon. Maybe listen to this whilst you're mucking out, feeling hay nets, or grooming for a bit of background noise. As a coach, I see so many riders coming to me with confidence issues and mental blocks that hold them back from fully immersing into their sport. Much of this seems to do with the breakdown of understanding between horse and rider, a fear you may or may not be able to pinpoint, or a pressure to get things right all of the time. The latter, I assure you, will never happen if you're working with horses. This then causes a lack of direction and consistency in your schooling to make a real positive difference to your riding and thus feeling like you're not improving. Despite always being a confident rider myself, I always felt that I understood the worries people have with their riding and simply that the reason I had to repeat the little things over again was just due to my comparable level of experience. However, my eyes were truly open when I learned to ski at 31 years old. I headed to Switzerland with my partner, who's a very confident skier, and after a few sessions on a dry slope where I felt pretty good learning with an instructor, I was excited and certain I knew enough to have a great time. I cannot express how different this was getting off the gondola and looking down the mountain. My body froze and I panicked. I forgot everything that I learnt in my lessons, and despite endless encouragement and patience from my boyfriend, I couldn't seem to put my head and motor movements together. I couldn't stop turn or even trust my own balance because I was overwhelmed with anxiety and fear at what could go wrong. I've seen this so often over the years when teaching and it turns out I had never truly understood. I never realised how the simplest of tasks was so out of reach when it seemed so obvious. It was frustrating seeing competent riders with all the skills they needed tell me that they couldn't do it but here we are, I now truly understand and it's one of the main reasons for starting this audio lesson. Whilst you're tacking up, use this time to get yourself into the right headspace for your ride. Do the things that make you feel good. It could be having the radio on at the yard, singing to your horse or even taking a moment to yourself. I've seen plenty of you sneak off for a cheeky cigarette. And whilst I'm not encouraging taking up smoking, if it works for you, hey, I'm not judging. It's also a good time to think about what you want to achieve for your ride. Is there something specifically you want to work on or is the main aim coming away relaxed and happy? Either way, it's important you try and focus on these feelings when things really click between you and your horse so that you can hopefully transfer that positive mindset into the saddle. Make sure that before you get on, you have everything you need to be comfortable from the correct clothing to tack which you know fits and suits both yourself and your horse. It sounds obvious, but you have no idea how many lessons I teach where the rider has to stop to get a pair of gloves or they haven't threaded their girth through the saddle cloth and it's disappeared onto the horse's hindquarters before the warm-up is over. Check all of this so once you're in the saddle, you can just concentrate on riding. Ditto, if you need to carry a stick or wear a pair of spurs, have these on you or to hand. I think it's also fair to say that if you're listening to this book because you're having behavioural issues from your horse, this is a reminder for you to check out everything physically, from teeth to back, potential lameness to correctly fitting tack. Get to know and develop a relationship with your equestrian professionals because they are invaluable to you. And by getting to know, I mean making sure they're always topped up with hot drinks and the occasional snack. Trust me, if you've lost the shoe on a Friday evening and you're competing that weekend, your farrier will remember these more than you think. As you go to mount, if this is an issue for the time being, have somebody with you either to horse hold or to leg you up. This audio isn't specifically working on groundwork issues, 
But if your horse questions you on the ground in any aspect, it may be worth taking a step back and having some help with this. Quite often, if your horse is giving you any form of difficulty at this point, it may very well transfer into your ridden work. Now you're in the saddle, take a moment to do a mini checklist before you start. Have you checked your girth, untwisted your reins and got yourself into a position with a stirrup length that feels comfortable for you? Again, this all seems very obvious, but if your mind is distracted, it's easy to forget. Give your horse a quick pat and we're ready to warm up. Spend a few minutes just walking in the arena. Most clients I know have a famous scary corner. It's like the horses on the yard get together and regale their stories about the killer pigeons that live in the hedge or that one time some leaves blew across in front of their feet. The fact that many riders reaffirm this by calling it the scary corner shows the link between horse and rider confidence. For this reason, spend your time warming up in the areas of the arena yourself and your horse are most comfortable in. The first five to ten minutes are not about putting any sort of pressure on yourself or your horse. It's just about stretching the muscles and getting you both into the best headspace to achieve your schooling. Having a fight in said scary corner or about walking over some poles or whatever other question you feel you may want or need to address definitely shouldn't happen in this time frame. When you are confident to start trotting, these rules still apply. Keep within your comfort zone if you're feeling wobbly as the best thing you can do. Spend this time in just the walk and trot whilst I'm talking things through. If you are most comfortable in the walk, keep walking until you feel otherwise. Whilst you're working through your warm-up, make sure you apply some structure using plenty of circles, transitions and changes of direction. The less interesting your warm-up, the easier it is for your horse to find something much more exciting to focus on. And yes, that may be a leaf for some. Be aware, but not wary, of your horse's body language. The more in tune you are to their subtle responses, the easier it is to deal with them before they become something bigger. And should your horse start giving you these responses, try to be calm and a good leader for them. So with that in mind, if you can feel your body tensing up, try to isolate which muscles start to tighten and focus on releasing them. Are you gripping with your inner thighs or legs? Try to release them and let your legs sit relaxed against your horse's side. Have you suddenly shortened one or both of your reins and got tight in your hand? Try to release them and keep your original rein length. If this is something you know you do often, some colour tape on your reins can help as a visual aid. The best thing to do if this is happening is to stroke or pat your horse whenever either of you feel tense. It will reassure your horse in that moment and it will also prevent your reins from tightening up too. I get all of my riders to do this, whether working on the basics all the way up to advanced schooling, as it's so easy to become fixed through the elbow and hand. Whilst you're busy being bombarded with warming up and thinking about all of the above, have you double-checked your general position again since you've been on board? A really common thing I see when teaching is riders adopting the fetal position, where the rider is hunched over in their upper body or leaning forwards instead of sitting up straight. This causes the rider's centre of gravity to alter and in turn usually the lower leg will destabilise and tense up. Try and keep yourself tall through your upper body and long and heavy through the lower half of your body without forcing yourself into position. Imagine you are a puppet where everything is tall but loose at the same time. Pay particular focus on keeping the length of your leg and the weight into your heels. As we covered before too, Think about the joints in your arms and upper body so they aren't tense and keeping the rein too tight. Your rein should feel elastic where you have contact with your horse's mouth without being restrictive. During the time I've been talking, how many transitions have you done? If the answer is not many, make sure you keep doing them. Walk, trot, walk, halt, trot. Vary the order and length of time between them. Make sure you are not changing it up every two to three strides and confusing the horse as he won't know whether you want him to go or stop. Aim for about 10 strides to a full circle minimum between your transitions. Ride them forwards and make sure your horse always has the space in the contact to go forwards in all of the movements that you're riding. If there is excess energy, the first thing your brain will want to do is contain it. Try to avoid doing this as the energy will always be safer and more productive going forwards within reason. 
Ditto if you're riding a horse that's prone to napping or resisting in another way. Forwards is 100% better than backwards. I know whilst I say all of this, the part of your brain with self-preservation is calling me a crazy person and you'll want to feel in control of the horse as much as possible. Think about riding a bicycle. When you're moving slowly, it's much harder to maintain balance in a straight line. Though when you are moving at a level forward pace, the energy is much easier to direct. I'm not saying if you're on a fresh youngster that you give it a hefty boot in the ribs before it's got its back down, but direct the energy of your horse comfortably forwards at all times. Another thing to be aware of is where and how your horse is going. Although this is probably seeming obvious, are you aware of your horse cutting corners, fearing off the track, trying to stop or going too fast when asked not to do so? It could be very subtle or it could be something that's borderline napping and causing a real issue. Either way, this is something you want to start correcting, both for your own and your horse's confidence and to give you both discipline to progress with your schooling down the line. Even if you deem it subtle, still make sure you correct these things as they could build into an issue that is much more difficult to deal with. Start with the basics and think about whether your horse is going forwards off your leg aids when you apply them. Does it take a squeeze, a kick, several kicks, the use of a whip? If it's more the latter of these, then you need to make sure that your horse is responsive. In order to do this, you will have to use more direct and possibly sharper than usual aids. Without realising, you may be asking the same one-dimensional kick or constant squeeze which your horse may become numb to. A good test of this is what happens when you take your leg off. If your horse instantly stops or slows down, you're definitely doing too much. I always teach a squeeze, kick, flick rule. One squeeze, if no response, one sharper kick, and if still no response, another kick backed up with a quick flick of a whip if you are carrying one. This rule needs to be applied at all times when riding, as getting yourself into consistent good habits will gain respect and responsiveness from your horse. If your horse is the backward thinking type, do not wait for them to grind to a halt before reapplying your aids. Instead, try to feel for more subtle cues such as a break in rhythm or reduction in pulsion and correct it immediately. As I mentioned before, your horse needs to be forwards in all aspects of work, including at times where he may be sharper or even at times when you are just relaxing or allowing a free walk. If you feel like you struggle with disciplining yourself to keep this going and you need a break, come to a halt on your own terms and both of you have a rest while standing rather than walking with no purpose or energy. Are you aware of the gate area in your arena? Your horse knows where this is and that he comes in and out of here to go to work. I usually find it's also an area where if you're on a bigger yard, others may come to watch and chat. If you have a backward thinking horse or one that's prone to napping or latching onto things, it's imperative that you do not hover or stop in this area as it will soon become etched in your horse's mind that this particular part of the arena is for chilling in rather than working. I've started calling this the danger zone with some of my current clients and there is to be no stopping or unplanned downward transitions in this area. When my riders keep to this, I can't tell you the difference it makes to all other areas of their work. Good, so we're going forwards in a nice rhythm. Check. We're busy still riding our transitions, circles and changing direction. Check. Our horse is going where and how we want it to. Excellent. Check in with how you're feeling now. If you and your horse are feeling relaxed, start to extend your working area if you haven't done this already. Make your circles bigger and start using more of the arena, again keeping yourself comfortable. If tension starts to develop, move temporarily back into your comfort zone. Temporarily though. You need to be able to take a moment and then go back to pushing on again so you aren't taking a step backwards. Depending on where your confidence is, if you are happy you should be starting to think about some counter transitions in your warm-up. In the same way you have worked in the walk and trot, use your arena where you are happiest. And if needs be, because things feel unbalanced or unruly, keep the canter brief, engage the, yourself in the transition back to trot, and then ask again. Be aware of how your transition feels. If your horse is running forwards in the trot, slow it down and settle back into a rhythm before going again. Make sure you are looking in the direction you want to go and not down at their inside foreleg also try to make sure you are not collapsing to the inside through your hip as this will shift your horse's balance. Aim to do two or three transitions on each rein varying the length of time in the canter. 
Try to keep this warm-up section as open and generic as possible. There is never a one-size-fits-all when it comes to horses, so I try to cover all bases. Some of you are nicely warmed up and ready for the next section, whereas some of you may want to rewind back to the beginning and rewind some of the earlier points before we move on to making things more specific in the next section. I like to give my horses and riders a two-minute break after their warm-up. Use this time now to allow yourself and your horse to relax, get your breath back and focus on how things felt ready for your main bit of work. Remember to stay conscious about how your horse is moving in this period. Just because you're walking on a loose rein, do not forget to give your horse positive direction. You can still be focused on making sure your horse goes exactly where you want them to go and using your legs to encourage them to stay forwards. If you feel like you're tiring, as I said before, find a spot away from the gate, the track and other horses and stand for a couple of minutes. It's better to be standing than walking aimlessly, letting your horse take charge. Now we've had a quick walk, shorten your reins again and pop yourselves back out onto the arena track. Your walk should feel purposeful now we're about to start doing some work. Take a moment to ensure your horse is listening to all of your aids and you've checked your position again. Your horse should be looking in the direction that you're going. If you're riding on a straight line, you should feel that straightness through your horse from nose to tail without looking to the inside or out. As you hit the curves of the arena, Try to make sure your horse now follows that curve and looks the correct way with a slight inside bend. Whilst I'm talking, incorporate a change of direction at around three quarters of the lap of the arena and work in the opposite direction. Horses are much like us in the fact that they have a stronger and weaker side. You may find that they can bend one way and not so much the other. Try to be aware of this as you ask your horse to move away from your inside leg pressure and into a consistent, not pulling, outside rein. It's probably something that you've heard about a lot, the inside leg to outside rein, but to most, it's the most alien idea. So, you want me to get my horse to look to the inside, but without using the inside rein. Yep, you heard correctly. Backward, right? When you learnt to ride, you were taught to kick for go, pull for stop, and pull the rein either direction to turn. To school our horse correctly, our basics were technically all wired up wrong, and it's something very difficult to unlearn. It's something I want to cover as a whole full session soon, but for now I want you to focus on feel and awareness of this straightness and bend. On your horse's weak side, they'll feel like they're pushing in against your inside leg pressure, or that they want to cut the corner and you feel like you have to go to your outside rein to hold them out. You'll notice that your horse will then turn his head to the outside and be looking completely the opposite direction to the way they're going. You may find that they do this on both reins, or on one rein they actually drift the other way, and you feel like you may lose your outside leg on the fence railings. As you become more aware of this in the walk, shorten your reins a little and pick up trot. Did your horse move off your leg when you asked? If not, remember squeeze, kick, flick. Do this every transition we ride. Remember, the key to all of this is consistency. Now start to ride a three loop serpentine. If you're not sure how to do this, it doesn't have to be dressage correct. Just ride across the arena from one side to the other in as equal thirds as you can make them. If you're struggling for space or you're really unsure about this, then stick to a figure of eight, changing the direction across from one diagonal to the other. These are really good simple exercises to practice the awareness of our bends and straightness as you'll be constantly changing the direction. 
As you ride into your turn, you need to have your inside leg on the girth, applying pressure into the corner, keeping the consistent feel in your outside rein at all times. Your inside rein may need to open slightly to guide your horse around the corner. Think of your leg as something your horse must move their body around. And as it comes around, you then apply your outside leg behind the girth to complete the turn. Try to then ride as straight as possible across the arena to the other side. If you know your correct trot diagonals, fantastic. Remember to change them each time you change direction. If you don't know this, again, it's something that I'll hopefully cover in another video. As you approach your next turn, your inside and outside leg will change. If you are using your right leg as the inside leg before, your inside leg on the second turn will be your left and vice versa. As you approach the turn, take a small half halt on the outside rein and then apply your new inside leg into the new outside rein. Outside leg behind to then complete the turn and ride through your next straight line. Aim to do a minimum of four serpentines or figure eights starting at one end of the arena and working your way back up. If you are confused by my use of inside and outside aid working, the easiest way to remember is that your outside aids are the ones nearest the arena edge as you are riding or performing a movement. The inside ones are the ones closest to the middle of the arena. If you're working with a coach at home and you're struggling with language, try and find a way that works for best for you. Some of my clients prefer left and right, or when moving around the arena, clockwise and anti-clockwise. All the time whilst you're serpentining, keep focusing on your horse's bend. It may not come naturally to them. It may not even come naturally to you to think about so much. Now I'm getting to use all four limbs simultaneously to do different things. But keep practicing on riding each turn as correctly as you can and they will improve. If it's difficult to change the bend, are you straightening up as you cross the centre of the arena? This is really important as it gives you time to prepare for your next turn. Be sure that you meet the track on each side and you don't allow your horse to anticipate and cut the corners. You may find that your horse speeds up with added leg pressure through the turn, especially if they aren't used to it. Should this happen, or even simply if your horse feels a little unbalanced through this exercise, think about your half halts. As you enter each turn, sit a little deeper and combine that with a small wool on the outside rein. The idea behind the half halt is it's not a consistent hold and it should be released once the horse responds and if needed you can reapply it again. Half halt, release, half halt, release till your horse feels relaxed and balanced. You may also be finding that although you're concentrating really hard, your horse still wants to fall in or out and it's unresponsive to your leg aids. Give it time and practice. Rome wasn't built in a day. Your horse will continue to learn as long as you are consistent with your riding. If you need to take a break after these serpentines, give yourself a quick walk now. Same as before, if you need to stop, then do so. Your horse will sense when you are tired and you should always pick moments in your schooling to take a break when things are going well for you. How did the work feel in the serpentine? Was it easy or difficult to ride? If you found parts difficult, think about why they felt difficult or why they may not have felt as smooth or comfortable. This is the reflection and awareness you need to grow your riding and whilst you're executing the turns, you may not have had time to think. So use these few moments to do so. If you are just comfortable in the walk and trot, repeat this. You may want to rewind the audio to the beginning and ride it through again. I have created tabs so you can find this easily on the video. If you are happy and ready to move on, pick up your reins into a contact again, and pick up the walk and trot back out onto the track. Take a moment in the walk if needs be to get things feeling how we've discussed. If the walk feels low energy or poor quality, this will only be harder to fix when you move up a gear or two. When you pick up the trot, the same applies. Really think about how easy your horse feels to ride in a straight line up the long sides and how easily they are coming around your inside leg through the turn on the short sides. 
This is a cornerstone before we step into counter, as usually a weak counter transition or the continual pickup of the wrong lead is probably linked to your horse's general balance and way of going in his schooling. When you're happy with the feel of your trot, pick a corner that you'd like to step up into canter. If your horse rushes going towards home, I suggest cantering away from the gate for your first transition so you don't have to worry about speed. If you're in an arena, a marked out space, or are familiar with the letters, canter on the short corners between F and K or H and M. When you strike off, remember to do a few strides of sitting trot with your inside leg on the girth and your outside leg creating power and directional control behind the girth. Relax yourself through your seat as much as possible, though if you struggle you can always pop yourself into a light or two-point seat with your bottom slightly out the saddle. Depending on how you feel, you may just want to canter large initially, though if you're happy with your canter, ride a 20 metre circle at the next available end. Are you still keeping tabs on your position? Make sure the weight is still down into your heels and your lower leg isn't gripping upwards. Keep your reins with a steady, even contact and try and relax your body into your horse's movement. If you can feel yourself leaning to one side, try and feel an even weight into both seat bones and down into the stirrup. Aim to keep the canter for as long as you are comfortable. I'm aware whilst I've been talking, some of you may have already taken a break back into trot, but for those still cantering, be it large or circling, pick a point to come back to the trot when you are ready. If you need to walk to catch your breath, do that now. Now think about your transition. Did you get it first time? If you didn't, when you ask again, run through the body tension checklist we started with and make sure you aren't holding that tension through the reins and holding your horse back. Also double check your leg aids to make sure that they were correct. If you did manage to have a good canter, how did it feel to you? Was it hurried? Did you feel like your horse was trying to break back into trot all the time? Did your corners feel smooth and balanced or more like you were on a motorbike on a 45 degree angle? Keep asking yourself questions. This is the key to things improving. Schooling properly should feel nice, not hard work or a chore. If it's feeling like that, keep asking the questions to yourself. How can you work on what you're doing to get the best out of your horse? You may not have had time to address these thoughts whilst the action is happening, but these moments of self-reflection should make up some time of your session. If you haven't already, I know I'm talking a lot to cover all bases, then change the rein and pick up your trot again. No rushing. Really think about your transition into the canter this time. Hopefully it will be better than your first one, just because you're taking your time with it. Now once in the corner of your choice, sit in trot, inside leg on, outside leg behind and strike off. Again, canter as long as you feel comfortable to. If you're riding a 20 metre circle, is it circle shaped, egg shaped, square? Is your horse looking where it's going and following the curve of the circle you're on? You should be starting to really feel which way you are both most comfortable on as the canter will exaggerate this. Support your horse using your inside leg and consistent outside rein for encouraging bend and balance through the turn. If your horse struggles to come away from the track onto the circle and is hanging through the outside shoulder as if you've hit a patch of black ice, make sure your outside leg is on behind the girth to push them in the direction you want to go. I focused a lot on the turns, but you also need to make sure, even on your straight lines, your canter doesn't feel like it's drifting off the track. Remember that you should be aware and in control of speed and direction at all times. When you are ready, if you haven't already done so, come back to the trot and the walk if needs be. Think about your downward transitions too. Did it feel rushed and unbalanced? Or were you both so relieved to drop back that you practically fallen in a heap with exhaustion and relief? If it's the latter, I'll let you off this time. But remember, everything needs to be in front of the leg. Depending on your own and your horse's energy levels, I do a little more in the trot before repeating the canter exercise again on both reins. If you feel like you've lost a little control of the pace or your horse has become extra unbalanced through the turns, 
step it back into the serpentine exercises. If you want to do it all again, rewind and run through the whole thing. You may even think that this is the best time to stop and that's okay too. The key though is to know your own and your horse's limits. Drilling your horse in his work can be as detrimental as not being disciplined with what you do. In the words of George Morris, former USA chef to keep, every moment you are in the saddle, you are either schooling or unschooling your horse. When you are happy, pick a good note to end things on. This may have been a while ago and you've been wandering around listening to me waffle on for God knows how long. Whether you've worked through everything or not, I'm hoping you've still pulled some useful bits out to work on. Give your horse five minutes or so now to walk off on a loose rein. There should still be emphasis on where you want to go and you still being in control of the speed. We aren't in the horse version of Baywatch where everything is suddenly in slow motion. Whilst you're walking, take these five minutes to fully reflect on what went well and what needs work. Remember, we are after progression, not perfection. You may want to use this audio for schooling again, be it daily for the time being, once a week as a refresher, or it may have given you the confidence to work by yourself more. You may also be thinking about having a lesson with a coach in person if you don't do this already. Remember, you cannot be eyes on the ground as things will be seen and spoken about live as it happens. Regardless of your situation and your goals, I hope this audio lesson has guided you into a direction where you can fully enjoy your riding and you're getting in the saddle feeling that progression each time. I'd love to hear more from any of you who have taken the time to listen and use this lesson. Please comment any requests for certain exercises, schooling issues you'd like me to address or even general feedback would be fantastic. Keep tuned to my channel by subscribing for training videos and audios or for daily training tips, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under the handle at Equiaudible.